The ISS has been in orbit around the Earth for 23 years at this point. However, the relationship between many countries engaged in the International Space Station, particularly the United States, Russia, Canada, Europe, and Japan, is slated to come to an end in 2024. Is this the beginning of the end for one of humanity's most significant achievements? According to the written agreement, the various space agencies will continue to assist the International Space Station for another three years. In the meanwhile, there's still more work to be done on the facility, some of which may be critical critical to its long-term viability. In today's episode, we'll discuss what's new for the International Space Station in coming years. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on the bell icon to never miss an update. Let's get going. Over the last few years, NASA has increasingly depended on third-party corporations to execute duties that had previously been performed by the government-owned organization. NASA has contracts with SpaceX and Northrop Grumman to conduct cargo resupply flights to the ISS as part of its Commercial Resupply Services program. SpaceX made history last year when it became the first private sector corporation to transport NASA astronauts to the ISS as part of NASA's Commercial Crew program. As part of the initiative, Boeing has also been awarded a contract, although it is currently undertaking uncrated testing. Generally speaking, NASA's commercial crew and commercial resupply projects are considered to have been a great success. It was projected last year that the commercial crew program saved the government between $20 and $30 billion, according to the EPA. Because SpaceX and Boeing each constructed their own spacecraft as part of the deal, NASA had the extra benefit of having a backup vehicle in case something went wrong with one of the vehicles on the launch schedule. This this has been proven to be prudent given Boeing's difficulties in obtaining certification for their spacecraft for human flight. NASA is now attempting to repeat the success of its commercial crew and commercial cargo projects with the Commercial LEO Destinations Project, which is currently in the early stages of development. NASA intends to grant up to $400 million in total to as many as four businesses as part of the initiative, which would be used to begin the creation of commercial space stations. NASA would save a significant amount of money if only a portion of the station's development expenditures there covered. The International Space Station ISS, cost $150 billion to construct, with the United States bearing the lion's share of the expense, ahead of its allies Russia, Europe, Japan, and Canada. NASA also spends over $4 billion per year to maintain and operate the International Space Station. There are currently several private enterprises that are on their way to launching their own private space stations. Axiom Space, located in Houston, is one of the firms at the forefront of the effort to build a commercial space station. In fact, NASA gave the business a $140 million contract in 2020 to construct at least one livable module for the International Space Station, which will be attached to the station by 2022. Axiom Space intends to launch with four modules as a starting point. The first two will be crew quarters, which will be outfitted with multimedia devices and large windows that will provide a panoramic view of the planet. A portion of the space will be set aside for projects involving research and technological development. Third modules will be dedicated to research and production, while the fourth will be a solar array, allowing Axiom's modules to function independently of the International Space Station when it is finally decommissioned and decommissioned from service. Axiom's private astronaut trips are expected to provide more funding for the company's planned space station. Axiom has signed a contract with SpaceX under which the business will utilize its Crew Dragon spacecraft and Falcon 9 rocket to launch a total of 10 missions. Although Axiom does not disclose the cost of its private flights, it is believed that a voyage with the company will cost tens of millions of dollars given that NASA pays SpaceX around $55 million each seat to transport its personnel to the International Space Station. However, Axiom is optimistic that it will be able to build a station for a fraction of the cost of the International Space Station, which cost NASA $150 billion. Axiom Space intends to launch its first module in 2024 and its its fourth module at the end of 2027. Sierra Space is another company that has been working on the construction of a commercial space station for the past several years. Sierra Space has been working on the Life Habitat, 
an inflatable construction that it has been constructing since 2017. During the intervening years, Sierra Space has been working to alter the concept so that it may also serve as a residence for astronauts on the surface of Mars or the Moon, as they'll as a free-floating commercial station in low Earth orbit. A model of the life habitat was seen by CNBC at the Kennedy Space Center, where it is now undergoing testing. The construction has a volume that is one-third that of the International Space Station, and it measures 27 feet in both length and diameter. After being launched into space, the structure will be inflated to its final size. It took around 40 trips to complete the construction of the space station. In two flights, the company can have a fully operating space station in orbit. Because life habitat grows once it's in orbit, it can put a significant amount of volume into it in a relatively short period of time. Sierra Space hopes that its first clients will be NASA and other international space agencies seeking to conduct research in zero gravity. Aside from space manufacturing, tourism, and maybe television and film production, the firm hopes to diversify its revenue streams in the future. Sierra Space aims to launch the first components of its space station in 2026 or 2027. The race is on to create a commercial space station before the International Space Station ISS is decommissioned in a decade. Both Axiom Space and Sierra Space are certain they can build a working space station on time. Let's talk about another company, NanoRacks which plans to launch its first commercial space station by 2024. Rather than building a new structure, NanoRacks plans to repurpose obsolete rocket upper stages as research stations. But like with any space venture, timelines might alter. Consider the commercial crew program. Initially, the program aimed to get humans aboard the ISS by 2017, but financial shortages and unsuccessful tests pushed the launch date out until 2020, and a late station may cause disaster for NASA. NASA relies on Russian Soyuz rockets to carry humans to the International Space Station after terminating the shuttle program in 2011, and the U.S. paid Russia handsomely, price per seat, $90 million. In 2020, SpaceX cut the cost to $55 million per seat. NASA sought $150 million for low-Earth orbit commercial development in 2020 and 2021, but only received $15 million and $17 million. It gave NASA $45 million in July, less than half of what it wanted for commercial development. Other countries countries will also compete for commercial companies. Russia also aims to build its own space station. Serving government clients like NASA can help private enterprises jumpstart their economies. Long-term successes depend on a larger private market, which might be their main moneymaker. NASA supplies the money, but it's inadequate for private companies to achieve much. They wouldn't do it or invest if they didn't believe in the market. Manufacturing, they will be the game changer. On the ISS, people have launched experiments and generated a hundred times longer fiber optic cable or found techniques to bioprint precise retinal implants. But what if it worked? It couldn't be mass produced. So by constructing a commercial space station and a commercial destination, private companies can create and produce things at scale and help clients do so even building a complete module for a customer to do so. For NASA, not needing to build a space station frees up funds for other projects. After years of success on the ISS, NASA wants to switch its attention to the Moon, Mars, and other exploration opportunities and let the private market take over.